Good morning, good morning, good morning, people of God. My name is Apostle Emma Panda. I believe and I understand that uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and we shall be glad in this day. Wow, what a wonderful day it is in the presence of the Most High God. What a wonderful day we have because we are alive. We are not in the mortuary, we are in His sanctuary. Welcome, welcome to our Sunday service and this is Communion Sunday and we believe and I understand that everything that we are about to do today is going to be 
uh, guided and directed by the Spirit of the Lord. So without much ado, I just want to welcome you all with, with prayer. I want to welcome you all in prayer because without prayer, we cannot go further because God um, is always with us. The moment when we pray, we are communicating and we are welcoming him in our presence. Therefore, I just want to pray for those who are with us, who have been with us, and those who are joining us today. This is Apostle Emma Panda, and uh, we are from Grace Ministries International, and you are welcome to be with us. I just want to pray for you. I just want to uh, thank God. We do open in prayer as we are thanking God and appreciating him for the gift of life and everything that he has done. Father, we thank you. Father, we glorify your name for this day that you have made. We shall rejoice and we shall be glad in this day. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for covering us with the precious blood of Jesus. Without you, Lord, we cannot do anything. Without you, Lord, we are nothing. We appreciate you, Lord, for taking care of all those who are connected to us. We appreciate you, Lord, for protecting them. We glorify your name for allowing them to even see this day. Thank you, Father. We are not in the mortuary. We are in your sanctuary. Therefore, take all the glory, take all the honor. Father, thank you because throughout the night you were fighting battles for us. Throughout the night you were destroying the wickedness of the wicked. Father, we honor you. We glorify your name. We come before you not to ask for anything but to just say thank you. Not to bother you with anything or complaints but just to say thank you. Therefore, take all the glory, take all the adoration. You are highly lifted up, O oh Lord. There is no other God like you. Thank you, Lord, today for trusting us with your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for trusting us with your power. Thank you, Lord, for trusting us with your angels. Thank you, Lord, for trusting us with the name of Jesus. Father, we glorify your holy name in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Now, people of God, I believe that uh, as we have prayed, there are three more prayers that we need to do because it is our intercession time. Uh, since I don't have worship team with me, but it is our intercession time. We need to intercede before we go into the word. We need to pave a way before we go into the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now for, for to thank you for covering all our family members, allowing us this, this first Sunday of this month to be in your presence. We thank you. We glorify your name, Lord, for protecting us against all the arrows of the enemy. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of our children, our families. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of our siblings and everyone that is connected to us. We honor you. We glorify your name. I cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. I cover their name with the blood of Jesus. I cover everything that is connected to them with the blood of Jesus. They shall not be candidates of sickness. They shall not be candidates of death in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. We appreciate you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to go before the Lord once again and pray that all your plans this month, they, must, they will come to pass. I don't care the delay. I don't care what uh, has been programmed by the enemy for you to fail. But I tell you, the enemy has failed already. You are not a failure. You are a success. As long as you are a child of God, you are a success. Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, I pray right now for everyone that is watching me. Everyone right now, I pray, let them succeed in all their things, in everything they do. The Bible says they are blessed as they come in, they are blessed as they go out. Father, in the name of Jesus, let it manifest. They are not the tail, they are the head. Father, whatever they touch, let it be blessed in the name of Jesus. I pray right now for everyone that is connected to this live stream right now. Everyone that is hearing me right now, north, east, west, and south may they be empowered by you lord to succeed and to move forward in the name of jesus you wish above all that they might help they might prosper and be in good health may prosperity locate them and they may they be in good health in the name of jesus this is their month this month they shall succeed this month they shall move forward by power and by might in the name of jesus christ by your spirit they shall succeed in the name of jesus christ because why it is not by their might it is not by their power but it is by you almighty god they shall be still and they shall know that you are mighty in the name of jesus father we thank you in jesus name amen i want to pray once again the last prayer is about a, a physical and spiritual entities that are fighting your progress father in the name of jesus i come against every spiritual and evil evil um 
evil altar that is fighting people's progress in the name of Jesus. I come against that, those altars in the name of Jesus. That altar that is saying they cannot make it in life. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That altar that is fabricating sickness to enter into their body through dreams, through uh, physical and uh, spiritual things. I pray let it be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every astral projection of evil upon their houses, I command it right now to be dismissed in Jesus' mighty name. Every evil power calling their names for evil purposes, calling their names for failure, stagnation. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You have got no power, you have got no right to touch God's people. They are a touch note. You have got no power to touch them. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, arise and destroy the wicked altars fighting your people. Arise and destroy the wicked powers fighting your people. Arise and destroy the wickedness of the wicked in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for what you have done and what you're about to do. Power belongs to you. Honor belongs to you. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. Oh, in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Once again, I commit this service into God's hands. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. I commit this uh, service into your hands. I commit this teaching and this preaching into your hands. Father, let it be uh, fruitful. Let it touch your people. I cover it with the blood of Jesus. And I speak light and I speak life in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that wherever your word is, there is liberty. We know that your word is like a lamp unto our feet. Therefore, we commit your word. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Jesus. Welcome, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Lord, for trusting us with your word today. Thank you. As I receive the angels carrying the word, I receive the angels of healing and deliverance that have already been dis dispatched into your areas. They've been sent forth to take care of your desires in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name for everything that you've done and everything that you're about to do. Power belongs to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Right, people of God, remember <clears throat> we are in the month of time and I welcome you to the month of time. As we are in the month of time, it is a good thing to talk about time. Those who are watching me um, from the studio, from CUT FM 105.8, those who are watching me live stream and those who are hearing me on radio, I just want to say thank you for taking time to hear what the Lord has given unto me to speak to you. Though I will not be preaching the same thing that I was speaking at the studio, but it will be a wonderful thing if you can see that clip. It is speaking about something so profound. I was teaching on the basic of the issue of how long, meaning it's about time. Listen to me and listen to me carefully. Time is very important. The moment when we understand time, the more we redeem our time, uh, the more we understand what is happening. Remember, the previous month we were speaking entirely about the issue of divine direction and we realize that divine direction helps us not to kill time helps us to understand that every time we are directed and we are led in the right direction we spend less time than to be confused thinking that we have got speed and we we, we can have speed but if we don't have direction our speed is useless we can be busy but as long as we don't have direction I mean, we will be stuck and it will be a, a misery in our lives. People of God, it's Palm Sunday. Uh, Palm Sunday, I believe many are, 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 are tied up because uh, they were supposed to be moving around the streets carrying palm tree leaves. I mean, it's our culture. That's the thing that we used to do. But God, I'm sure, is trying to show us that we must not be stuck in religion. We must not actually use it as a religion, but we must use it as our lifestyle. It's something that we must do. It's something that we must be used <laughs> to do. So, huh, people of God, I don't know. It's Palm Sunday, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And... Uh, uh, many are, are, are just um, recalling how it all happened and uh, I remember my main uh, area which I was interested in about this donkey which was tied for some time. This donkey was tied for some time but when Jesus was about to enter a triumphant entry uh, he, he commanded that donkey to be released. <laughs> The time for the release of the donkey had just appeared. The time for the donkey to be released was there. So Jesus sent them 
uh, and, 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 and he told them that if you get into that town, you see a donkey that is tied. Tell the owner that Jesus is in need of this donkey. Wow, it's so amazing. If you read that story, it tells you that everything has got its time. And I like and I would love your time to come and your time to appear when Jesus is with you. The donkey was not expecting to be a celebrity that day. A donkey did not expect to, to, to be, I mean, uh, uh, celebrated at that particular day, but it went into that city with Jesus. Imagine, it does not care. It does not matter how long you have been tied up. It does not matter how long you have been stuck. It does not matter how long things were not working for you. One thing that matters is if you enter into your prosperity or if you enter into your place uh, of abundance, enter with Jesus. That's the key factor. And that is something that we need to understand and embrace. Because the moment when you are stuck, it's time. That is a time. It is needed. That time is needed because why? That time is for your testimony. That time is for you to understand that things were happening in this way during that time. Remember, everyone who has a testimony, they can tell you about yeah. their time. They can tell you what happened in that time. There were times of struggle. There were times of sleeping without eating. Look at people who are married. There are times when they were fighting. There are times when somebody slept outside of the house. There was a time where somebody poured oil, what oil, on that uh, partner of theirs. But look at them now. You cannot understand what happened during the course of that time. Many are celebrating uh, many years in marriage, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. But if you sit down and ask them, how did you get to that apex? How did you get to that um, uh, place or where you are right now? They will tell you, you know what? There was a time in our life. Everyone records time. Everyone goes back to time. Everyone moves to time that's testimony for you there is a time when you were not working there is a time when you were not married there was a time when you did not know how to put food on the table there's a time when you were not having a business there was a time when you were struggling to make ends meet all that we are talking about this month is about time it is about time so I am just setting up a platform today as it is our communion Sunday. I believe that wherever you are right now, your communion is ready. I, my communion is ready with me right now because I have it with me. So we are going to, to be doing our communion service. This is the blood of Jesus. This is the, the flesh of Jesus Christ. So we are going to minister the communion right here, right now on the screen uh, at the end of this teaching because in the beginning the word must come. So this is our communion. I'll leave it here where it is so that you can see it. And then I will pray for the one that you're having at home. And I believe and I understand that the Lord is going to do something. I know he's going to do something. Just relax and know that God is in control. People of God, let us get into the word of God. You see, in the beginning, the word has to come in. Let us get into the word of God. I will start with the book of Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10 verse 10. <clears throat> the Bible says, And the Lord discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon. At Gibeon. Um, wait, 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 did I go now? What did he do here? Please, uh, let me start with verse 10. You have moved to verse 11. Before I finished, let me see. Uh, okay. And the Lord discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth up to Beth Horon and smote them to Azekah and unto Makeda, verse 11. Verse 11, it says, um, And it came to pass as they fled <coughs> from before Israel and were in, um, in the going down to Bathron, that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them and unto Azekah, and they died. They were more which died with hailstone than they whom the, Israel, the children of Israel slew with the sword. Verse 12. Then spake Joshua to the Lord, 
in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. Verse 13. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Joshua? The sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. Hmm. People, remember, when we look into the scriptures, we need to understand what really transpired here. And when we look into the scripture, we need to know, we need to actually come to a point of understanding. There was a battle taking place. There was something that was happening here. Uh, and uh, Joshua uh, and the children of Israel were actually in a war. They were actually in a battle. And during that time, God had promised them that this battle is yours. This battle you have actually, I've given it into your hands. But something really happened here. I realized that when God uh, got involved in this whole thing, he started to put hailstones. Things started happening. The rain come, came down and stones were hitting uh, the, the, the opponents. And the enemies were killed by, by this hailstorm which was coming down. That was a time. You see, there is a time when God fights for you. There is a time when you don't need to do anything. There is a time when he's in your life. There is a time when God appears and do things in your life. Sometimes you don't need to do anything. Sometimes you just say, Lord, if it's your will, let it be done. God did something in these few scriptures. You realize that when God started uh, putting the rain to uh, making the rain to come down, the Bible says there were more who were killed by the hailstorm than the one that were killed by the sword. So which means when God is dealing with your enemies, he deals with many than what you can deal with. When God is dealing with issues in your life, he deals with it at a broader spectrum because he does exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever imagine or think about that's our god for you god can do things that you cannot imagine he can do for you god can now do extra remember when solomon was in that position where god asked him what exactly do you want he said just give me wisdom god gave him two extra more packages along with what he had requested that is our god for you god has got the ability to do extra and unless if we allow him to do it at his own time there is a danger with people people normally want to pressurize god people normally want to push god people want to do things i told you during the week on thursday if i'm not mistaken i spoke to you on that service and i told you that there are two times there is chronos and there is kairos Kronos is the one that we use as human beings. Kairos is the one that God uses. It's the appointed time. Kairos is the appointed time. That is what God uses. And remember, in our life, there are three times. Three times, yes. It is my time, your time, and God's time. Now, listen to me clearly here. When you look at family, they can come to you and they can ask you, why are you not working? By now why are you not yet married by now why are you not uh, yet having this or that by now why are you not uh, mixing with other people why are you not doing this remember that's their time everyone is entitled to speak something about their time you need to understand that people's time must not affect your time and God's time now get this when you get to a point of actually uh, dealing with time, the time of God, you need to know that if I'm dealing with the time of God, I want to make his time to match with my time. I want his time to be in line with my time. I want God's time to be in the line with my time because at the end of the day, people's time does not have any say in my destiny or in your destiny. Now look at this. <coughs> People might come and say, why are you not yet married by now? Tell them it is not yet God's time. Why are you not fasting for your marriage? Tell them it is not God's time. 
Why are you not reading the word? Why are you not doing this? People have got their own assumptions. They've got their own ways of dealing with certain matters. But like I said, you need to understand that there is your time, there is my time, and there is God's time. Many times we are under pressure because of people's time. Many times we are always under pressure because we are busy worried about what people are going to say. Now, if you look at it, your own time, sometimes you don't even work with your own time. We are always under pressure because there is somebody that we want to please. We always work under pressure because there are some people that we want to prove something. Sometimes we waste time trying to justify ourselves. Sometimes we waste time trying to prove a certain point. That is now wasting of time. But if you spend your time with God, he reveals to you the secrets. He reveals to you deep things. He reveals to you things that you need to understand. So at the end of the day, if you look at that picture, you realize that your time and God's time must merge together. They must come together so that they can become one. Your destiny cannot be fulfilled by listening to people's time. People can put you under pressure. People can actually come to you and tell you what you can do and what you cannot do. So now, people of God, get this and get this for me right now. I want you to know this because everything that is needed is God's time. Psalm verse 90, verse 12. Psalm verse 19, verse 12. If you read it, it says, So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. So teach us to number our days. We need God to teach us to number our days. We need God to, uh, to put it into our heart. He needs to teach us how can we apply things per day. Look at this man called Joshua. He understood the times. He understood what to do at a particular time. God did this for him and he knew that God has done it for, him, for them. As the children of Israel, they were hit by hailstorm. They were killed at that particular time. Their enemies were destroyed by that particular time, but there were some who were remaining. Then he said, okay, fine, Lord, I know you have done this. The Bible says he spoke unto the Lord. That was very stating. He spoke unto the Lord, and he, say, and he spoke to the son, and he said, son, stay where you are. I mean, that one is so powerful. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. The moment when you know how your days are, the moment when you put a plan on your days, the moment when you set your plans very well, knowing that on a particular day, this is what I'm going to be doing, that is the wisdom that is being applied there. Knowledge is applied wisdom. Now you need to understand that I have the knowledge. I know what I want to do, but I need the wisdom to number my days. I need to know that on day number one, I'm going to be doing this. On day number two, I'm going to do this. That is knowing how to work with your time. You need to understand that working with time is so delicate. Now, people of God, I take you back to that uh, scripture that I started doing with. The Bible is talking about the sun standing still. In other words, if you make the sun to stand still, you affect our chronological time. If you make the sun to stand still, you affect the time that we use here on earth. If you make the moon to stand, you affect the time that we are using because our time works along with the sun, along with the moon. So when Joshua, on that day, when he said, uh, stand, stand still, stand thou still upon Gideon and the moon in the valley of Ajalon. When he spoke about this, when he is talking about this, you realize that what he's talking about here is an issue that affects our chronological time, but it does not affect the Kairos time. So when Joshua said the stand stand still, I, I looked at it and I said to myself, this was summer. <laughs> Why? Because summer we have got longer days and shorter nights. Longer days and shorter nights. And that is my own assumption. I'm not saying it's written or it's something else. I'm saying that's where I took it because why? When the sun stood still, actually the day was prolonged. The day, I mean, that day took longer than expected. So at the end of the day, you realize that there's a manipulation of the systems. There's a manipulation of things because Joshua uh, spake unto the Lord to, 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 to deliver the Amorites before the children of Israel. So at the end of the day, you realize that there is time that you say, I will not let go until God blesses me. 
I will not let this thing go. There is something that you need. There is something that you want. There is something that you have invested time in. You cannot just let it go. You cannot just look at it and you say, ah, no, it was not meant for me. Let me tell you something. Some things which are meant for you. This battle was meant for Joshua to win the battle. So he has to do everything that he has to do to manipulate time. What are you trying to do to manipulate time? I saw somebody. Let me give you a story. This lady was not uh, working. This lady was a bit old. And the lady said to herself, you know what? If I take myself to school, upgrade myself, something will change in my life. So this person was working during the daytime. At night time, the lady was going to school. The lady graduated. She was a domestic worker. She graduated and she became a graduate and got a better job. Working under somebody was for her to get the money so that she can pay for her fees. In other words, the four years that she was working, it was like she's a nobody. But the time when she uh, graduated, she became a somebody. She now owns a company house. She now owns a company car. She's now getting a hefty salary. Why? Because the way she used her time. Many of you, you are working and many of you, you will die at your workplace without thinking of tomorrow. Why? The time where you are right now, think about after your retirement. Think about after what you're going to do after. What is, how are you going to live after? What is going to happen after? Number your days. Plan with wisdom. Make sure you organize your time very well. I saw some people, I have to understand, they have to, people, you need to understand this. When the, the psalmist was saying, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days. When we number our days, we are not talking only of the present. No, we are talking about the future. Many people, you normally see others, they take a boat and they go out, they, they now have a vacation home, some they move around uh, with a caravan, wherever they go, they can sleep there. Why? Because they numbered their days with wisdom. They knew that after this, I have calculated, I know that after my retirement, this is what I'm going to do. Now there are some who got stuck. The moment when they get up to the retirement stage, they don't have anything to do and they will die early. Why? Because the problem is you did not number your days very well. So look at it and then you understand that when you move with the time of God, God makes you and allows you to speak or to direct the things. You write them down. You put them down. This is what I want and this is what I'm going to be doing. The moment when you put them down, the moment when you list them, there is something that happens in your life. There is a change that comes in your life. There is transformation that comes into your life. Time. Many people, they don't have a plan. Many people, they don't have a vision. The moment when you don't have a vision, you don't even worry how you spend your day. You don't even have any thought whatsoever that if you miss one hour of your day, you have missed a a chunk that you can never recover for the rest of your life. That one hour is very essential. That moment is very essential. When you waste your time doing useless things, you can never recover that time. If you lose an hour, if you lose a day, if you lose a week, if you lose a month, then you are in trouble. Look at this. It's not about how tired you are. It's not about the place you are. It's not about the people you have. No, it's about how you use your time. I told you in the beginning about that donkey. That donkey was tied. The Bible did not tell us how long it has been tied uh, on that tree, how long it has been staying there. But there was a time when Jesus said to, this, uh, to, the, to the disciples, go and untie it and let it come to this side. The thing is, whatever that you are doing, maybe you might not have a plan. Maybe you might not think about your tomorrow. Maybe you might not think or understand what is happening around you. You need to know that even if you are tied up, look for Jesus. Let Christ direct you. Let Christ lead you into the place of your uh, celebration, where people can celebrate you. Remember, right now as we are uh, in this lockdown, it is time for, for self. We call it self-time. Time for you. Time to understand who you are. 
time to sit down, number your days, number your way. Think about what you want to do. After this, plan, have the, 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 the advantage and the disadvantage of your business. Have areas that you want to encounter. Think, it's time for you to think. It's a self time. It's time for you to think right now in these 21 days, if you come out the same way, I'll be shocked by you. You need to come out in a different way. You need to come out in a, with a different view. You need to come out with a different understanding. This time, you don't need to waste it. Those who were not having time to read, find time. You must read. You can read up to 2 a.m. and then sleep the whole day and wake up again and read. Why am I saying that? Because one thing for sure is you need to upgrade yourself. Look, research things that can upgrade you as an individual. If you are working, how can I be promoted? If you are a single person, check how single person can handle themselves. How do they behave? How do they, how do they uh, make people to, uh, to, 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 how can they be attractive to people? What can they do so that they are, countenance can change so that their behaviors can change what is it that you are to do it, it's called a self time do an introspection check everything around your life listen there is something that happens proverbs chapter 16 verse 9 the bible has got something interesting here that i'm seeing now a man's heart listen proverbs chapter 16 verse 9 <clears throat> a man's heart devises his way but the lord directed his steps did you see that a man's heart, if you look at it, a man's heart de devises his ways. In other words, a man's heart plans something. A man's heart, uh, th th there are things that a man's heart does. There are things that a man's heart can do. It has its own way. You, 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 you now think of a way, but the Lord directed these steps. There is a point when God directs your steps. There's a way that he does it. That is if you know how to work with your time. Don't be a person uh, without a timetable. I saw these other short, um, small tech scenes. When they are moving, they will just go peep, 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 making noise all over, peep, 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 making noise. Even if you are not going to get into that taxi, it will wait for you. <laughs> it will wait for you. After five minutes or ten minutes of you walking, going towards that direction, they'll ask you, are you going? And they say, then you might say, no, I'm not going anyway. But they have wasted more time waiting for you why they don't have what we call a timetable that's why you discover many of us we've got diaries we have got our own personal diaries why do we have diaries It's because we need to have a timetable we need to program ourselves we need to know what to do at a particular time at a particular moment now that taxi can come beep, 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 beep. There are certain buses around here in the area that we are in, here in the free state. There are those buses, they have got time. If they arrive at a bus stop at 9 o'clock and you are not there, they will not wait for you. They go. And I've never, I don't know if they've got hooters, those buses, because I've never heard them. Pee, 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 pee. No, they don't make noise. People who make noise are people without a timetable. Don't be a person who talks too much or makes noise. It shows that you don't have a timetable. Don't try to put your timetable on other people's lives. No. Your timetable and your planning is your planning, not other people's planning. And your time to succeed is not other people's time to succeed. Your time to move is not other people's time to move. So you need to understand that my time might not be your time. And according to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, it says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. To everything there is a season. So there's a time for you to be prosperous. There's a time for you to win. There's a time for you to fight. There's a time for you to do things. There's a time for you to be uplifted. And there's a time for you to be brought down. There is a time when we are logged in and there's a time when we are going to come out. But the thing is, if there's a time and a season for everything and a purpose of things under the heavens, what are you going to do when you come out? You plan it now. Don't live a life where you just stumble upon a blessing. No, blessings are not to be stumbled upon. You don't just stumble upon a blessing. No, you work towards it. You plan towards it. The Bible talks about building. It says before you build a house, before Jesus was telling them, before you build a house, you calculate the cost. Why do you need to calculate the cost? Because it saves time. 
It will make you to understand that, am I able to do it or I'm not able to do it? Now, people of God, I am setting up the foundation. I'm setting up the time. I'm setting up the foundation of time. I'm setting up everything so that we can understand that tomorrow, when things fail, when things are not working the way we want, check your planning. Every time you check the way you were planning, the way you were using your time to plan, the time when you sit down and you do your thinking very well, you do your research very well. This is the high time where you must not spend time on Facebook looking for gossip. This is high time you spend on researching what you want to do. Research on what to do. Spend time. Research. What is it that you are doing right now? Research. How can I do it better? How can I do it uh, to the maximum uh, potential? How can I expand my thinking? This is the time. You need to go into a point where you understand that there are seasons, there are times and seasons, and you need to know that you can manipulate times and seasons. I love this man. He said sun stop. He said moon stop. Everything that uh, has to do uh, with that day had to be on a standstill until he accomplished what he needs to accomplish. How can we say things must stop and your thing, look, our life is like on a hold. It's like the sun has been, is, is stand still it's like the moon has been called to stand still this is like that time where things are not moving where things are stuck like we are seeing like the world is is upside down but let me tell you something that's where you must be thinking that's where you must find solutions be a solution giver don't be a problem but be a solution giver come with a solution the world needs people who comes with solutions who spend time looking at the problem, not discussing about the problem, but looking at the problem and trying to find out how can this problem be sorted out. People, we all have got 24 hours. That is our time. We all have got 24 hours, but it depends what are you going to do with your own 24 hours. To be rich or poor, it's all about how we manage time. I saw close to me here, uh, close to my house, there are two guys who own a, a, a barber shop around 5 a.m every day those guys will be in the shop early in the morning while these others are sleeping they are already working now you see whenever they now get successful in their business we see now individuals becoming jealousy of them why because they were diligent in what they were doing you can never be diligent and become poor no the bible talks about diligent people the moment when you are diligent the moment when you are when you are diligent you become successful you can never be diligent in what you are doing and become poor. No, failure is there. You can fail in certain areas, but failure is a route to success. Many people are stuck. They stand on one position and time is moving. Time is not on your side. Time is very precious if we understand how to use time. We need to redeem time for the days are evil. We need to, to know how to utilize time. We need to plan well. We need to know what to do at a particular time. Upgrade your game. Upgrade yourself. Make sure you are well upgraded. In everything that you are doing, upgrade yourself. See how you can improve your areas. Don't be comfortable in that area. Don't be comfortable in one position. Don't be comfortable in what you are doing now. Try to upgrade. Try to make sure that you meet up a certain standard. Try to make sure that you cannot be the same like what people used to know you before. If you meet someone today and says that, ah, you are still the same person and you look the same way that we saw you in primary school. Yeah, that is a mockery. According to me, it's a mockery. If somebody comes to you and says to you that, wow, you still look the same. Yo, we last saw you in primary school or in secondary school. I mean, you must change. Things around you must change. There must be a transformation in your own personal life. There must be a turnaround in your own personal life. That is time. I need you people. When somebody leaves you in your life, let's say you were married before or you were in a relationship, when they leave you, what are you going to do during that time? Are you going to be a psychopath? Are you going to be a crazy person that will be only following that person now and then or trying to embarrass that person in public? What are you going to do? Upgrade yourself. One lady was actually uh, separated, was actually left alone, so she was disappointed. Then she was told to upgrade herself. She upgraded herself, and the man saw that, wow, this person has actually moved forward with life. This person has actually graduated or moved to another level in life. 
Why? Because that person did not say my life stands still. Mm -mm. She made the situation to stand still so that she can move forward. She now made a better life out of that disappointment. There are people who are disappointed. And when you are disappointed, you now put your back to the ground and you are stuck there. You don't need to do that. You need to arise, dust off the dust and move forward. Don't allow your background to put you to the ground. You are a better person. You are a good person. This lockdown, like I said, it's about self time. It's about family time. It's no longer about friends time. No, 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 no. Friends are no way. You are there alone in your house with your family, the one that you were running away from. You are not at your business. We normally had business time, but now you are not there at your business. You are now yourself and your family and you are thinking like joshua who is saying that as for me and my family we shall worship the lord as for me and my household we shall worship the lord so people of god you need to understand this before we take the communion of today before we partake of the communion today time is of an essence we need to utilize time I went, I used to go to hospitals back then. I used to visit hospitals. I used to visit people that are in hospitals. People of God, you realize that the person who used to call himself a charmer, the person who used to have many girlfriends was sick in hospital. And he was saying to me, I wish I knew about God by then. Now look, time is already gone. You are sick. You are now on your pro process to, to go to the grave. And now you are now thinking, I wish I had known about this. I wish I had known about this time. Remember what the rich man said when he was in hell and Lazarus was in heaven. He, he, he was begging to say, can you send somebody to go and teach my relatives so that they can know about this thing, that real, hell is real, heaven is real. The man was in agony. The man was in fire and he was in pain. Why? Because there is something that we push ourselves to. The moment when we don't use our time wisely, the moment when we don't use our time effectively, we end up suffering, we end up in pain because we don't know how to use our time. Those who are in relationships, ask yourself, how long have we been in, in this relationship? How long have we stayed in this relationship? Check the time. You are not growing younger, you are growing older. If you see that relationship does not have marriage, inside it run away from it it's toxic if you've got friends that you have been friends with for 10 years and your life is not changing run away from them their time has expired we we, we we don't need to expire before we inspire we need to have an inspirational life we need to actually make things to work in our lives that's where you look um, this one is putting some scriptures here the uh, Proverbs chapter 21 verse 5 listen to this the plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. The moment when you have plans, the moment when you set your plans well, you are going to see profit coming into your direction. You are going to see success coming into your direction. Don't blame anyone for your uh, lack of planning. If you lack planning, don't blame anyone. If you lack uh, planning, if you can't plan well, don't blame other people and say, uh, no, it is because of this person, it's because of this person. Proverbs 21 verse 5, it's saying it clearly. The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. So the other, the other thing that you need to know is many people spend their time sleeping. But the Proverbs 21 verse 5 is saying the plans of the diligent leads to profit. The plans of the diligent is not only plans, but the plans of the diligent. It means that those who are diligent, I spoke about it and I told you and I said, for one to succeed in life, you need to be diligent. You need to be consistent. You need to be persistent. So if you look at it, the plans of the diligent lead to profit. Surely, if you, if you are a diligent person, profit is going to come into your direction. You can never spend four years at school and come out with nothing. No ways. You can never spend 22 lessons doing driving and come out with nothing. No, you will come out with something. Something is going to materialize in your own personal life. That's where you discover that poverty is a choice. Poverty is a choice. If you blame it on other people, poverty will be your portion. 
but I, 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 I denounce it and I say poverty is not your portion. I denounce it and I say poverty will never come close to you. And I say poverty will never be connected to you. People of God, wherever you are, I want you to understand this from me. I want you to know it right now. There is nothing out there that can destroy you if you've got a plan. Use your time effectively to accomplish your plans. Use your time. You see, you have, got, you have got something that you desire. You want a job. You want to be an engineer. But now you don't have a qualification of, uh, for you to become an engineer. What must you do? Work towards that. That's the planning. Work towards that. Plan towards that. How can I get myself? Uh, I, I want to give you a, a, as an example. <clears throat> there was a point in our life, me and my wife, we were actually sitting down one day. And we were thinking, she was busy coming in with... Uh, different different courses during that time money was not there we could not afford to pay for that fee she even got admission at a university but money for her to go there was not there so what did she do she did not stop because money is not there don't start to to, to don't stop looking for something because you are not able to pay for it start to look for it now she started looking for different courses she went to a point of getting to a point of looking for a health and safety officer at nosa and all those other places trying to get a position there but tell let me tell you something money was not there action from above normally follows your faith when you put faith in a certain area god opens up a door for you when you put faith and you trust God where there is nothing. When you trust God that I'll achieve this, God will do it for you. That's how we can use our time. She started looking for a place. She started looking for those things, knowing how much fees, how, how long this course will take to be a health, of, a health and safety officer. How does it take? And how does it, until she ended up getting into Nebosh and then she got an international qualification. But it was not a one day journey. It was a journey of researching, but it took time. It was not something that was that happened just like that. No, it took time until she managed to pay for those fees. Now she was now channeling money into that because everything that was coming in, she was channeling into that cause because it's something that was planned for in a matter of time. You don't fall into success. You plan for success. You don't fall into a degree. Listen, people are being given honorary degrees. You just wake up and now you are Dr. Mama. But let me tell you something. Those things are, are, are not something that you have worked hard for. They are things that you work hard for. They are things that you actually put your all in all into. They are things that you put your time into. They are things that you read. They are things that you study. They are things that you go into deeper understanding. You research and you find out how can I be at this position. Don't be jealous. No. Those people that you are jealous of, they manage to use their time. When you see people eating their money, just look at them and say, how did they get there? How did they? Don't be jealous to say, ah, these people, they spend. These people, I used to look at other people with uh, three cars and I would say, no, 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 no. That is a, that is a, that is, that is, that is useless. How can somebody have three cars? Ah, I used to be like that. Then I realized that you need a bucky. When you need to pick up trash in your, in your yard, you need a bucky to pick them up. So in your collection of cars, you need a bucky. You need a family car, an SUV car, where you can carry the whole family and you can take them to holiday. You need a, 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 an executive car that can take you to meetings and appointments and important times. So different roads, different cars. That's how it is. And then people are getting confused. How can this person be like this? No, 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 no. Those people planned well. When you plan well, things will happen in order in your life. Many people's lives are not in order because they don't know how to use time. There is a time to plan. There is a time to reap. There is a time to plant. When you plant something, you are going to reap it. If you plant knowledge, you are going to reap wisdom. If you plant knowledge, you are going to see profit. You are going to see success in your own life. People of God, wherever you are, I want you to understand that time is of an essence. Time is very, very, very important in our own lives. So everything that you're going to be doing, everything that you're going to be touching after this lockdown, may it become a success. Where were you failing before? What is it that you were doing that you were not succeeding before? Check on it. Try to develop on it. Were you failing to be a mother? Were you failing to be a father? 
Were you failing to have good or long relationships? Were you failing to stay at work? Were you failing in other areas of your life? What were you failing? Which areas were you failing? So you need to know that the areas that I was failing before, I need to fix them. I need to, 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 to sort out that area. Sit down, study the areas, try to find out where have I been failing because that's how you use your time. You can use your time to check on your weaknesses. Where are your weaknesses? Write them down. How can I work out my weaknesses? People of God, we have been too busy. Our minds have been too busy. We have been too busy trying to bring in money. I was being told this morning that on TV, there were some people who were now saying that, ah, now I'm having time with my children. Now I'm having time to see that uh, I can't, I, I'm, I'm no longer smoking. I was smoking before, but now if I go to the to the spaza shop to buy uh, cigarettes, they are saying to me that there are no cigarettes. So it has actually made me to quit smoking. Some people who were drinking, now they are not drinking because there's no pub that is selling beer. There's no tavern that is open to sell beer. So you can see that if they can do it for 21 days, you become good in it. If you spend time working on your weakness, you become a master in it. People, I'm talking about time. I was laying out a foundation and making you to understand that on this Palm Sunday, make it a point of knowing that you were tied before. There was a point when you were tied. There was a point when you were stuck. But on this particular day, you were set free. After listening to me right now, I know that Christ is going to be with you. I know that Jesus is going to walk along with you. You can walk you can walk with him and be celebrated. It's a choice. You cannot walk with him and you can be left behind. I don't know how many donkeys were there. I don't know how many were there. Maybe some were being used because they were not tied. But this particular one was tied up. The time that donkey spent in its lifetime, I'm sure it was tied up somewhere. You might be tied up somewhere, but today God is saying, work out a plan. The reason why other people die in their sleep is because they don't have the plan of tomorrow. The reason why other people will not reach to their destination is because they don't plan for tomorrow. If they look into their pocket, they don't make plans. If they look into their accounts, they don't make plans to stand. If they look at their environment, they stop uh, thinking about the future. But I'm here to tell you something. Don't stop dreaming about your future. Don't stop planning about your future. Don't stop doing things because other people have failed in that area. Don't be stuck. Like I said to you, there is my time, there is your time, and there is God's time. Those three times, they are always there. Wherever you go, you are going to find them. People of God, Forget about people's time. People's time will always put pressure on you. People's time will always come to you and tell you that, can't you see you have tried long enough? Can't you see that you are still failing by now? Can't you see that uh, you, you, you should have been doing greater things or other things? People's time is always a problem. People's time always puts you under unnecessary pressure. But one thing for certain is, I want you to be assured. God is a God that loves you. As I am about to pray for the communion, I want you that wherever you are, whatever you are doing, whatever that you are busy thinking about, may it come to pass. Sickness cannot stop you. Mephibosheth was a lame person. He could not walk. Mephibosheth was a crippled person. He thought that as he was staying in Lodipa, his time in the palace is gone. But let me tell you something. Something changed, something transformed, something uh, made an impact, something changed when he was called to come to the palace. So right now, people of God, I want you to stay blessed. I want you to understand that as I'm uh, doing the communion with you, as I'm praying for the communion right now, something is going to change in your personal life. I want to pray for this communion. So wherever you are, I want you to know that this communion is going to change many things in your life. May it change your mind. May it change the way you see things. May it change the way you have been doing uh, things before. I'm going to pray for you right now. As I'm praying for you, may God touch your life. I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, renew their minds. Father, make them to utilize time effectively. 
Let them know that the, there is planting time and there is harvesting time. Let them know that whatever they do is not in vain. Whatever they do in your presence is not in vain. Whatever they touch is not in vain. Whatever, Lord, you put into their hearts is not in vain. Father, touch them and bless them indeed and enlarge their territory. I know that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all that you can ever imagine or think about, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, touch their minds. I know some have actually said we are failures. Some have said we cannot move forward. But I remember a man called Paul. He cried to you three times and he said he's got a thorn in his flesh. And you said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. Father, your grace is sufficient for your people. I know you are going to bring strength in their weaknesses. I know you are going to bring joy into their pain. I know that you are going to bring light in that darkness. I know that you are going to transform their lives forever. As they partake this communion right now, Lord, transform everything in their lives. Father, I open it up and let it be the blood of Jesus. I speak right now to this communion drink, let it be the blood of Jesus. Whatever that has not been working in their lives, everyone hold your communion, just open your communion, let me pray for it wherever you are. I want to pray for your communion. That communion must change, it must be the blood of Jesus. If God gave the authority to Adam to, to give animal names, I want to give that name to that communion, whatever it is that you're holding in your hands, I speak right now, it is communion. You might not have time to buy the communion, get water, I will pray for it, and I will turn it to be the blood of Jesus. Father, I pray right now, you are the same Jesus who turned water into wine. You are the same Lord that does miracle. I pray you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. As I pray right now, let this communion be the blood of Jesus. Let it be the blood of Jesus. Whatever that is not found in your blood, may it not be found in their blood. Whatever that is not found in their blood, I command it right now to be uprooted in the name of Jesus. Whatever that is evil that is in their blood, whatever that is not found in the blood of Jesus, may it not be found in their blood in the name of Jesus. This blood of Jesus will flush away sickness. This blood of Jesus will flush away everything that has been causing you to be in pain in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for this bread. May it be the body of Jesus. I pray as it was broken, may our lives be mended. As it was broken, may our lives be healed. As it was broken, may our lives be saved in the name of Jesus. Whatever that was planted in your body, whatever that was placed by the enemy in your body, it has got no power, it cannot stand inside of you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for what you have done and what you are about to do. As we partake this communion, I know that their lives will never be the same again. This communion is blessed in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. I pray right now that this communion is blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. So wherever you are, I want to right now to take the bread and the communion. I want you to drink it wherever you are. I left my small cups at church, but nevertheless, we still have communion. So wherever you are, may this communion work for you. May this communion transform your life. May this communion change your story. May this communion change your mindset. May this communion transform your life. May this communion speak in, your, in, the, in the lives of everyone that is connected to you. Everyone that carries the same blood as yours, this communion shall speak. I speak right now as you partake this communion, there shall be healing, there shall be transformation in the powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This communion is blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I believe that wherever you are, as you have partook this communion right now, you have taken this communion, healing shall be your portion. Joy shall be your portion. Divine ideas will come towards your life. There will be a transformation and there shall be a change of story. I can see that some of my uh, daughters have been sending, have been sharing this video. I can see Yevriel Wanyende. She shared the video on a platform. Thank you very much. Others, I believe they have done it also. I haven't checked and see who has done it, but I would like to say thank you for that. 
And I know that the Lord is going to do wonders in our lives in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So may the Lord continue to bless you indeed. May the Lord continue to shine upon your life. May the Lord continue to bless each and everyone that is connected to you. People of God, remember throughout the week I'll be having teachings. Catch me tomorrow. Tomorrow I have an interesting teaching. Tell all the singles out there I have a teaching for them. Tell those who are the singles that Apostle the Mordecai is going to talk to you. I'll be Mordecai tomorrow. I want to teach you some things. There are some principles that you must know before you get married. Even those who are married, join in. You will learn something there. You are going to change something there. So join me tomorrow. I've got, I think, like seven things that you need to know. I think eight or ten that you need to know. So invite friends, invite everyone so that they can come and watch um, that live stream. It will be on this same account. I'll be teaching uh, about the issue uh, of how to behave or how you must be before you get into your marriage. So people of God, thank you for watching. I appreciate you. I thank you very much for your time. I appreciate you for being part of this service. I thank you. I pray for you wherever you are. May sickness not come close to your house. May evil arrows never penetrate into your life. In the name of Jesus, I break every arrow. I break everything that the enemy has devised to come to your domain. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that no weapon fashioned against you will ever prosper. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. Everyone that is watching me right now, GMI family, wherever they are, and all the others who are watching me right now, I want to say bless you. I want to say rejoice because the Lord is with you. Fear not, for the Lord is with you. Do not worry. Do not panic. God is with you. This is a time for you. God wanted time with you. God wanted time with you. That's why yes, actual, this thing is happening. Every disadvantage, there's always an advantage. In life, every disadvantage, there is always an advantage. So fear not, relax, and know that God is in control. God has ever been in control since from the beginning of time. God has been in control. So people of God, my name is Apostle Emma Panda. Let us catch each other during the course of the week. I will be teaching you tomorrow at half past eight. I'll be live. I'll be teaching you about something, all the singles. So stay tuned because I know that it will be powerful. May the Lord continue to bless you. My name is Apostle Emma Panda. I'm signing out. Shalom. Good. God bless you.